Hi, I'm Steven Singer. Yep, that's me, the I Hate Steven Singer guy. No coupons, no sales, no anything. Just the perfect price. Experience the difference. Come see me, the real Steven Singer, at the other corner of 8th and Walnut. By phone, 888-I-HATE-STEVEN-SINGER. Or online at IHateStevenSinger.com. One place, one price. Hope you had a good uh, weekend. Certainly do hope so. I did. If that makes you feel better. If you had a shitty weekend and uh, you're saying to yourself, ah, wish it was more fun. But at least Anthony had a fun weekend. So um, I give you that. (laughs) I I went out and um, actually uh, sang some karaoke. Even with my voice, this beat up. Uh, For some reason, in the singing range, it was okay. It's when I try to talk low. that gets all all fucking Peter Brady on me. But uh, yeah, being able to just belt out a few tunes, did that, went into Greenville for the weekend. And uh, um, actually, for the first time in, in months and months and months, had more than just a couple of glasses of wine. <laughs> oh, I just didn't feel good the next day. I'm not used to the hangover anymore. The like pretty good. It wasn't a, a crazy one. It wasn't like I was, you know, completely snotted, but I'd had maybe, I don't know, three or four glasses of wine, four glasses of wine. And then some of those, um, some of those white claws, you know, a couple of those at the karaoke joint, you know, got to loosen up. No one gets up to sing karaoke without some booze. No one. So uh, I did that and then uh, came home, uh, played some Call of Duty, which at that point, when, when you're drinking and play Call of Duty, it's just you're yelling constantly at uh, the stupid game. Uh, and that was, you know, that was about it. And then I woke up the next day uh, late. Like these days I usually get up, like I wake up at about 10 a 10 AM. And then I lay there in bed, just going through Twitter and posting, uh, racist stuff. Uh, but, but, uh, I felt it. It's like, Oh fuck. I got up to take a piss. And it's like, Whoa, like the woozies. I did have the wherewithal to pop a couple of Excedrin uh, before I went to bed, which was key. So I wouldn't have that pounding headache or anything, but first time in about six months that, uh, I, I felt kind of a hangover. Didn't miss them. Didn't miss the hangovers. Gotta tell you kind of happens though, when you're put in the position, uh, where, you know, you can't drink as much as you used to it just happens. Medical stuff, mental stuff, whatever it brings that to you, uh, when you, you have to stop drinking, uh, at least as much as you did, you know, uh, and by you, I mean me, <laughs> at least as much as I did, uh, yeah, you're kind of not used to the hangovers and you know, you, it's once a week or once a weekend, you know, I might, uh, uh either Saturday or Sunday. I'll usually have some drinks during the week. <clears throat> not, not anymore. I was drinking, you know, going to Sullivan's before the shows and doing shots of uh, Jack Daniels and, uh, and um, Jameson with Gino. It's crazy. And then on Wednesday, Gavin would come in and that meant even more shots. 
And then if uh, a fan came in that knew I would sit in the back corner of Sullivan's doing so- show prep, they would know I didn't want to be bothered. So they just send over a shot and I give them a wave and do the show. And it was, I was doing a lot of shots every fucking day of the week. Every day I was in anyway, which wasn't a lot toward uh, that time. But uh, it was just uh, too much. It was way too much. And now, you know, you go down to uh, one or two days a week. If I go to brunch on Sunday, I love some mimosas. <laughs> the champagne bubbles tickle my nose. <laughs> and some mimosas with the uh, with brunch. Uh, but I don't keep anything in the house because I don't want to, you know, I get bored. And I'll go to the, like anyone else, when, when you get bored around the house, you open the fridge. You go to grab, you know, something to eat and you you realize you're eating. You're like, I'm not even hungry. I'm just like, I got to do something. I feel like I got to do something. Uh, and having any kind of booze, even wine in the house, it would be a today, like today I'd go, Oh, it's nice out. I'm doing the show. Let me just get a glass of wine and I'll have it. Here. And then before you know it, I'm drinking, uh, a bottle, two bottles of wine, uh, during the weekdays. So I don't want to do that. Uh, I do think there is a way to just do it cold Turkey. I understand the way is to have your life threatened. <laughs> it's to have your body rebel against you, literally rebel against you and say, uh, no, no, you will not do this uh, anymore. Um, cause I've always been an immature, uh, uh, I won't even say kid at heart. I, I've been, um, just immature. I guess that kind of covered it. Uh, and I never really look at age or anything like that. I just go, I, I'm having fun. I enjoy what I do. I don't care what it looks like to other people. I don't care if I should act my age at some point. I, I just, uh, never, never followed that kind of uh road you know so yeah i buy toys i i do streams i'm goofy uh i drank a lot uh shit like that um but yeah that's just what i like doing but uh you can fight it as much as you want there's a point where the the amount of years you've been on this mortal coil uh, and your actions kind of uh, come to a loggerhead. <laughs> and you go, ah, fuck. I could still be a douchebag and goofy and buy toys. And uh, shit, it just got to the point where I could not drink the amount I was drinking and live. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Uh, it was fun uh, to a point, you know? There would come a point during the, the course of the day going into the night when you're still drinking. Like those nights I would just stay at Sullivan's. Fuck it. I'd get done with the show. Uh, maybe Chrissy's show was going to start in an hour. Everyone was going to Sullivan's before that. So I would go there after my show and uh, sit and drink. And a lot, again, a lot of shots involved. And I never used to do shots. Gino did that to me. And then you realize I got a pretty good buzz on. It's relatively early still. And then you just wind up sitting there and, you know, watching the, the TV if there's a game on and scrolling through shit and just pounding drinks down. So, uh, yeah. And, and I think there's a point where you don't start feeling any more gooder. <laughs> you know, like, like when you have a, a beer and a shot and you're like, all right, I feel pretty good. This is good. And then you just keep doing it. You do reach that point where you're like, and then it falls off. And now you don't feel any more drinks aren't making you feel better. I guess you're just hoping to uh, prolong the feeling good part, but then you're just not feeling good physically. You know, you just don't feel good. And then, you know, the hangover is coming. And uh, that is just a, a chore. So, uh, like I said, uh, over the weekend on Saturday, we went out and did some karaoke. And, and I had a little more than usual 
and usual these days has been not that much at all. So uh, it was a a little reminder of what hangovers are like and how uh, much I don't like them uh, physically and mentally. You know, you feel totally beat up. You, you got this woozy, whooshy feeling. Um, your stomach, your headaches. And, and mentally, you're just in a downer place, you know? Uh, when, when I used to hear in school, of course, they talk about drugs and alcohol. And they would talk about alcohol being a depressant. You're like, how is alcohol a fucking depressant when I drink and I feel so good? I guess after, you know, the, it starts wearing off the good feeling, that's when the depressant side of alcohol kicks in. And you just don't feel good. You don't feel good about things. You don't have a positive outlook on what's going on uh, in your life. And, um, and then you just grab some more drinks and you realize, why was I feeling so down? This is awesome. I feel great again. <laughs> and my hangover is gone. So I don't know. The last thing, you know me, people. The last thing I would do is preach to anybody about uh, drinking. That's for sure. You want to drink, have yourself a fucking field day. Have a genuine pisser. Drinking booze, but um, <laughs> but uh, truth be told, I think most people, at least cutting down, would uh, would help out. And uh, some people need to just stop entirely. I've seen that. There are people that cannot cut down. Man, I I know this. I, there, and and I wouldn't. I, I would cut down a little, and then just be right back where I was because I didn't have uh, the Grim Reaper uh, standing there going, no, no, why don't you? <laughs> that kind of is a little bit different than just going, ah, I don't like the hangovers or I function better when I'm not uh, drinking or something. But um, yeah, I guess it, uh, I guess, I guess it's not easy, but uh, if you're put in a position where you have to do it, you have to do it. That's how things are. Like things I also, you know, like exercise. I hate exercising. I fucking hate it. I don't even like 10 minutes of exercising. It's just, but again, I realize I have to do it. I get, you know, I get on a stupid rowing machine and, and do that and then start swinging around kettlebells. I don't like that. When you're done, you kind of feel good that you did it. But the thought of doing it is like, I'd rather do anything. I'd rather sit on the shitter for 10 minutes, <laughs> scroll through my phone, taking a dump, than, um, than have to uh, uh, work out. And some people love it. Missy loves it. She's working out all the time, going to jujitsu. She trains little kids now at the jujitsu place. Like, uh, you know, she tells me these horrible, depressing stories of, the little fat kid that isn't that good. And the other kids in class make fun of him. Like, I don't need to hear this. Just teach him the crane or something. So he could kick that little bastard in the face. It's real life. It doesn't work that way. I hear he quit. <laughs> I hear he quit. It's like, oh, you know, the little fat kid I was telling you about. Yeah, he quit. Like, oh God, it's not like the movies where you get to beat the bully up with your fucking awesome Kung Fu karate or jujitsu. They just harass you until you leave, go home, and either kill yourself with snack foods or to pick up a gun and shoot shit up. So, <laughs> poor, poor little kid. I felt terrible. I didn't want to hear about it. Uh, yeah, I got some. I got some calls. I like taking calls, especially from people that are watching on YouTube. We're doing this every uh, Monday uh, for the foreseeable future. We're doing it every Monday where the first half hour of the show from 4.30 to 5 is broadcast uh, on YouTube. So you can get a little, little hint of what my uh, whole show is about. It's just about talking. It's especially the first half hour. It's just a lot of me yammering on about life in general and things and, uh, I don't know, situations, common interests, guy stuff, drinking, not drinking, whatevs. Uh, and the phones. I like that because a lot of shows, especially when they're on YouTube and things like that, they do not take phone calls live. A lot of these shows are pre-taped. 
And the live shows don't really have a, a setup for live phone calls, but hey, that's what makes us so special. So let's uh, take some calls. Mike, Mike, you don't yeah. talk to a man. You don't come here to Las Vegas and talk to a man like Mo Green like that. <laughs> Mike, what's up, man? Good. I'm actually outside of a open mic. It's going to start in a few hours. Oh, and given, where at? And given you're known as the best host of the best comedy radio show. Crazy. You know, I thought it'd be uh, it would be appropriate to call in. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Are you listening on Compound or uh, YouTube? Uh, YouTube. Yeah, great. I love it. Love yeah. it. Uh, you know, I believe you have a 10-year anniversary coming up in uh, July. Crazy. This is fucking yeah. nuts. Ten that, fucking years yeah. since I had been fired from Sirius XM Satellite Radio, uh, uh, the Opie and Anthony show. Ten years whipped by. Uh, it, it, it really does. That's another thing that gets a little alarming when uh, you, you creep up um, on the old age scale. Uh, whereas you thought time was flying by in your 40s and into your 50s. Holy fuck. This is like, and I'm gauging it these days by, uh, by hearing like, oh, uh, hon, the, uh, the garbage has to go out to the street today. The, the garbage men come tomorrow once a week. And it seems like, oh, I just took the garbage out. And now, oh, the garbage is today. It, it's like this fucking Groundhog Day thing where a week seems like a day. And uh, it's, it's really nuts, dude. And 10 fucking years. Since I was fired, yeah. I remember doing shows, the ONA show at Sirius XM shortly before. I remember the 20 year anniversary thing we did at Caroline's Comedy Club uh, that Ron Bennington put on where me and Opie were live uh, on stage. Great big audience of fans. And uh, Ron was doing uh, an interview on us about how how things uh, started and how they progressed and where we are now. And within no time, it was over. (laughs) I had been fired. It turned into Opie's show that went, um, uh, you know, belly up and, uh, and it's been 10 years of doing compound media. I I'm, I'm stunned, but uh, thanks for the reminder. (laughs) Yeah. Um, you know, this is only like the second time, like I've been listening to you for, for maybe 16 years now. But it's all the wow, YouTube shit. compilation. Um, yeah. I, I, I just never had a radio or one of those in range or Syria. Yeah. Uh, so, the, yeah, this yeah. is the second time I've ever listened to you live. So Ooh. it's pretty cool. You know, I appreciate here's a question it. About com- here's a question about right-wing comedy on YouTube. Do you yeah. think people like Ben Shapiro, whoever that ball, the uh, Tim Pool? Yeah. The guy who looks like the Barani guy, they're not, they're, they're making these comedy movies and they're complete horse shit. Like it's, yeah. uh, it's like, uh, like, what is it? That black, uh, black exploitation. This is right wing exploitation. It's people yeah, are yeah. Hacked, have no goddamn punchline. You know, all, all they're doing is being paid by the Koch brothers to keep, uh, yeah. keep propagandizing, you know, and, and already they, no offense pretty brainwashed uh, segment of the population. Yeah. They, they made a movie that was supposed to be like, um, like a parody movie, I guess. Yeah. Uh, What was it called? It was terrible. Uh, It was like the worst of the ringer. Yeah. We got to realize, we got to realize where our strengths are. Uh, People uh, that consider themselves on the right uh, really have to find where their strengths are and go with that because uh, movie making and things like that. I don't know. Unless you're Mel Gibson, like Mel Gibson is an amazing movie maker. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, you know, you got to look to the libs and all those fucking monsters out in Hollywood. Yeah. They seem to know what they're doing when it comes to putting a, a movie together of late. Well, they've been pretty fucking bad, but overall and throughout the years, you got to give it to the liberal community for uh putting out some pretty righteous movies. That's why it's so distressing 
when they speak their mind and you realize that they're liberal pieces of shit because yeah. you're like, oh, fuck, I, I thought this guy was uh, cool. Uh, and they put out a great movie and then you realize, oh, I, I can't stand this guy. Uh, but the right just they're not good at that. So find what you're good at and, and run with it. I got to let you go, Mike, where we're, we're okay. you know, on, on a schedule here with uh, with YouTube being broadcast live. So uh, thank you uh, for the comments and the support. Do appreciate it. Boo, 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 boo. Jared's got an interesting take on uh, on something that I saw over the weekend, too. Jared, what's up, man? Hey, man. Great to talk to you. Of course. <laughs> What's up? Hey, can you hear me, buddy? Yeah, what are you, are you talking through crinkled cellophane? Yeah, well, I'm calling from like the east coast of Prince Edward Island, and I don't have any cell reception, so it probably sounds like crap. No, it's not bad. Okay. Okay. What's up? Yeah, no, it's just cool to speak to you. Uh, I just wanted to hop in and ask, because, I mean, you had Jim Brewer in the studio countless numbers of times Many over times, the years. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering, this weekend, he kind of came out with something that was a little weird about Dave Chappelle. Uh, I yeah. don't know if you heard it or heard anything about I did. it. You did. Yeah, yeah, I did. And it was weird. It was what could be called cryptic, if anything else. He was uh, on Roseanne Barr's show. Or Roseanne. Yeah. yeah, it's Barr still now, right? <laughs> Not Arnold anymore. <laughs> uh, Roseanne Barr. And they were they were talking and uh, Brewer brought up uh, this story about Chappelle. And right before Chappelle uh, went to Africa for his little retreat to get his head together and whatever reasoning he gave back then, uh, this was when. A season, the the final season of the Chappelle Show uh, had aired. No one knew if he was re-signing. They offered him boatloads of money, and he said, "I got to get out of here. I got to go to you know the motherland and and get my my uh, shit back together." Now, what Brewer was saying was that there's more to that story in that people, some people of great power, were threatening Chappelle. Uh, to, I couldn't even figure out w why they were threatening him. It seemed like that he ha would have to continue doing the Chappelle show, which, you know, I'm, is there a mafia over at Comedy Central uh, that breaks legs if you don't continue doing your shows? Uh, I don't know what it was, but it sounded very strange, and uh, uh, Brewer seemed to uh, believe it, uh, and, and he was telling it not like it was a joke, and Roseanne kind of uh, was was freaking out a little about it. So uh, yeah, what was, was weird, what was your right? takeaway um, with it? I don't know. Like it was everyone was kind of having fun and they were going through, you know, their normal routine of like their their anti-right comedy stuff and what what it's whatever. And then they kind of I don't know, it felt like he felt really comfortable in that situation and kind yeah. of let something slip, right? And it was probably inconsequential to, you know, like in the end maybe they didn't edit it for a reason. I don't know why, but yeah. it's just something that caught me. It was just weird. And then it, it was, was like, all of a sudden, they just switched right away, you know? Like, let's get the fuck off this topic. Like, who were yeah, those yeah. people? Yeah, yeah it, it's weird. I don't know what it was, but, uh, you know, I'm sure people are going to ask him about it. Um, I, I do have we'll something see to follow up on that, though. Um, yeah. Because Bill Burr, and I don't mean to bring up any dirty laundry between you guys or anything, but Bill Burr is yes. also known as a Chappelle guy, came up with Chappelle too. Yeah. And he took a real, real switch. And now he's where he's at doing what he's doing. And I don't know about that conversation he had with you. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of, that's personal. I wouldn't want to go into that. But it seems, there's, is there a correlation there? Do you think personally? I don't know. You know, Bill, uh, he just told me that his wife had made it so he could not work with me again uh, in yeah. the business, as they say. So, you know, I don't know if that has anything to do with some cryptic uh, Dave Chappelle uh, mob stuff, uh, but it kind of painted, 
Bill in a bad light of, you know, tell your wife to shut the fuck up and tell her I'll, I'll hang out with whoever I want to. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I maybe we'll, maybe we'll kind of, find yeah, out. Yeah, I weird too, man. Like, because you yeah. guys sat together. You know what I mean? Not to interrupt you, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You guys sat together. You guys, like, shared, like, laughs. You had moments yeah, together. Yeah. So goes, I just found that kind of, yeah, yeah. That's how it goes. All right, enjoy yourself yeah. up there in Prince... Prince Albert Pierce Dick Island. Where are you, Prince Edward? <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you. Have a very good week. Later, man. Later. Canadians are so funny. Saw a clip of some Canadian guy trying to get money out of the bank. There's some just insanely strange stuff going on. He, can't, he goes into the bank. He goes to withdraw $3,000 to buy a car from his friend. Uh, and he starts recording this because this bank teller is is asking him what he's using the money for and that she can't give it to him until he can prove what he wants to use this cash for that he's taking out of his own account thank so you guys are great give you a bank let's watch card. so if you're gonna get cash i will need an invoice for a car purchase why no i'd like to t it's for it, the car's payments for in cash i know i can't i can't use a bank draft are you buying from like a private yeah it's private person? it's literally from my friend from your friend yeah but he wants it in cash can he give you like anything say when you're purchasing from him no, I don't. You don't need that, I, bro. What is it? I'm only asking for three. And what, what is this? I, I, it's my money. I'm allowed to withdraw from my own bank account. Yeah, so I can. He said that what's the maximum limit you can give a withdrawal to a customer? It's three thousand dollars on the day. You've already mentioned that multiple times. Yeah, not today. Why not today? What are you talking about? So, can you fucking believe that? I've seen the clip and it goes on a little longer, but she's asking him for a reason. She needs proof. That he's taking $3,000 out to use to buy this car in cash. How about none of your fucking business? How about that? What the fuck is going on in Canada? Which obviously will go on soon here. But, uh, you know, sometimes you got to take out a shitload of cash. Uh, you got some construction guys coming over your house. You want to take care of them. Uh, get a job done without uh, having to go through your checking out, whatever the fuck it is. It's none of their business. You're doing them the favor by putting your money in their bank. You'd never know it from the fees and all the bullshit they give you, but uh, they make money on your money. A fuckload more than you do by putting it in their bank. Um, and you have every right to take it out when you want it. It's my money. And I want it now. <laughs> That's, uh, that seems to be what the, what the issue is up there in Canada. I know there have been days where I've had to, you know, if I was going to go to Atlantic City, let's say, and I wanted to take out like $9,999, just off the top of my head, a, a random figure <laughs> off the top of my head, uh, I would have to make an appointment. That's bad enough by the way, but I would have to call them like a day in advance and let them know I'll be coming in for that. Or they said they don't have enough money in the bank, in that bank branch, which brings us to the big picture of what the fuck happens when a bunch of people, for whatever reason, want to take a bunch of their money out of the bank, if not all of it. Uh, there isn't enough money in the country. There isn't enough printed currency in this country for everybody that has money in the bank to take it out and put it under their mattress or, you know, whatever they want to do, bury it in the yard. Uh, and that's a scary prospect if there's a run on banks, uh, which could happen for many reasons. I mean, my God, it was just World War II over the, or three over the weekend. How was your World War III? That, by the way, is so crazy with that uh, bank thing. I just got to... Um, Hopefully that, that doesn't come here, but anything can come here, especially where money that isn't real money is involved. Now, that's not real money. A woman doesn't just go and count off thousands for this dude. Uh, they're electronic digits, and you have a certain amount of electronic digits uh, accounted for in their institution, and uh, you can only take out in cash a few of those digits, exchange them for, for actual cash. And Again, if everyone tried to do it, ain't happening it ain't fucking happening so uh 
That's kind of crazy. Uh, we'll talk about World War III uh, right after we uh, bid a fond farewell for this Monday. That went fast to the fine people on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you could watch this whole show. Go to compoundmedia.com and subscribe. It's a very low price. You get 20% off of a subscription price with the promo code compound20. And then you get to watch the entire show for an hour and a half. Isn't that great? But um, I'm glad you joined us. We'll be doing this every Monday. So uh, either subscribe or be a cheap fuck and uh, wait a week to uh, get another cliffhanger. Like we're talking about World War III that happened, didn't happen. And you won't be involved. But thank you, YouTube uh, viewers. And we'll see you next Monday. There they go. There go our YouTube viewers. Don't you love them?